I'm Greg Hunter. Welcome to USAWatchdog.com. Back in January, the guest I'm about to have on came on and said, and this was everybody was all a fritter. We're going to have the biggest year yet. This is going crazy. We're going to go sky high. We're, and he says, I, we're topping out right now. Uh, as, and uh, we're, we're getting in the process of topping out. And he, was, and he said, I quote, I'm more worried about a 40% downside plunge than I am about 5% more. He called it within 2% of the top back in uh, late January. And I'm talking about the uh, world-renowned cycle expert in geopolitical and economic cycles, Charles Nenner. Charles Nenner, thanks for joining us today on usawatchdog.com. Thank you. Thank you. The way you talk about me, I'm interested myself, I'm yeah. going to say. <laughs> well, well, you also came back on uh, after that call in March, and we were down 20%. And you said, we're all halfway there. And sure enough, we were down about, what, 38%? Um, and uh, you and Bull Pony are the only two people they call this. Pony said something like uh, that we were going to go down to between 35 and 40%. But anyway, let's talk about you. And so you were right. You stuck by your guns and you're still calling for a 5,000 Dow. But yet now we have crazy time of, you know, the money printing extravaganza where they're printing out trillion. The Fed has balanced, d doubled its balance sheet and they say they're going to go to 10 or 11 trillion. They went from 3.7 trillion to over 7 trillion in their balance sheet. What's going on now with the market keep chugging along? Where are we now? Uh, is, the, is, the, uh, is the party back on? Uh, is the uh, danger over? Well, first of all, my uh, my selling at the time when we were at the high, we had zero stocks and it was based on all kinds of indicators and there was no virus yet. Uh, that's why I tell people it's very interesting that we have a, a, a writer who writes a, about the black swan and instead of trying to figure out what the black swan is going to be, see the black swan, I think he, his definition is that something's going to happen, but you don't know what. And I've always been saying, and it's in my, all my work of the last 30 years, I don't care what's going to happen. I want to know when it's going to happen. So I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know what was going to happen. And it happened to be a virus. So everybody's concentrating on the virus and they're missing the big picture. Now, the big bounce, we have been on a, on a buy signal for a long time because, as you understand my work, the cycle was up. Now, the cycle is up into the third week of June. So now things start to be risky and we're looking for a short term sell levels and we're going to lighten up because uh, I trust the cycles and we'll see what happens the third week. Now, what happened over here is not so crazy. I have shown my subscribers uh, what happened in 1929 and what happened in 1973, 74 and what happened in the 2000 uh, crash and what happened in the 2007, 8 crash. And I did that because I hear the media say, well, the market knows much more than we think. Well, what happened in those bounces? There were huge bounces after the crash in 1929, after the crash of 1973, 74, and after that, the market only came down. So obviously the market didn't know what was gonna happen, uh, but it's very hard to, uh, to, to, to do something about these rumors. I was laughing today. I told my wife because, uh, you know, when I got out of the market and like it now, they say since February, the, the, the is officially a recession. Uh, so actually, that's what we saw. Uh, but the interesting thing is how they put it, it was officially a recession. Well, once a long time ago, I don't know who it was, somebody made the definition of what a recession is. Uh, and now it's an official recession. What is official about it? So people make up these stories and it puts everybody on the wrong, on the wrong foot. And that's why most people don't make money. Now here in Amsterdam where I'm sitting, uh, they write about hundred thousands of people that open accounts at brokerage firms that never were in the market. Uh, obviously, those are not the very educated uh, investors. They're just investors that invest because it's going up. So that's a bit worrisome. So according to my numbers, the two, two, two parties who, who make these bounds go up that are the short coverers, people who are short, and the newcomers uh, in the market. And uh, it's very normal, this bounce that happened, uh, if you look at all the other market crashes. And I know that the, uh, the uh, NASDAQ made a new high, but if you look at it, it's mostly the FANG stocks that are doing it. 
So I don't look too much at that. I look at the Dow Jones, I look at the, uh, the Russell 2000, and I look at the S&P. So again, there's nothing new what happens over here. Uh, just what I wanted to mention about printing money and supporting markets. Uh, when I was at Goldman Sachs, uh, I pinpointed uh, in February 2000 the high, and I showed them what happened in 1929, and every time when the interest rates were lowered, the market popped and it went lower and lower and lower. And uh, I think the same is going to happen over here. I don't think you can artificially stop a situation as bad as it is right now. So the, based on economics, based on that the S&P is almost the most expensive in the last 100 years, uh, I don't know what they're talking about. Numbers don't seem to, 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 to change anything. Um, so it's all based in, on emotions. And if you do an overlay what happened in 1929 with what happened now, you see it's not so so strange what's going on. Well, you say that it's you can't stop what's going to happen with it as bad as it is right now. What do you mean by that? Well, things have to go their way. You cannot keep these, what I call the super cycle that started, according to me, in 1870. You cannot keep it going and lowering interest rates and lowering interest without having consequences. One of the consequences is uh, somebody asked me, how is it possible that big firms are after four, five, six weeks in financial trouble? Well, they're in financial trouble because interest rates are so low. So they came up with the idea, why pay dividend? Let's take a loan, interest are low, let's buy back our own stocks. And then the stock market came down and the stocks are worth less and that's why they don't have cash. Another thing is we have in Europe these pension funds that according to the law have to be, I think, 70% in, 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 uh, in bonds and the negative interest rates. So they're buying billions and billions in negative interest rates. So how are these people going to get their pensions? So how are going to, is there going to be any buying power in Europe? So these things have consequences that nobody thinks about. With zero interest rates. So and uh, so where do you where do we go from here? Uh, you say you're we're topping out in three weeks. So some no, I think it depends on which market. It's about between the 22nd and 26th of June. And then how far do you expect it to go down the next shot? We, I still think it'll go down all the way down. I think the low will only be there in 2022. So you still think that we're going to have this pattern of, of lower lows and lower right. highs. Explain. Right. Explain lower lows and lower highs. Well, because market goes in certain certain waves, it doesn't go down. It's like a bull that, that 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 you throw up in the air, and then until it's on the ground, it goes down. It goes up again. It goes down, lower, high. That's how that's how things work in nature. Now, until now, it looked very strange. How can it go Dow go to five thousand? But since you know, I'm a medical doctor, and I'm in touch with the, with with my old friends who are still in medicine. Uh, we're 90% sure there's going to be a second wave like there was in 1918 and in the mid-1900s. Uh, and it's going to be much worse. Of, co uh, oh, hold so on. of COVID, of, of the yes. coronavirus. Okay, go ahead. Of I'm sorry. I, 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 okay, go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. So so even if you don't look at it like this, that means that you're just gambling on the on the virus. Now, my, my sources, I sound like, you know, a politician, but my sources say, it could be very likely like they never found a vaccination for AIDS that they're never going to find a vaccination. And my source says that it seems now that the Im immune system only works for four or five months after you have been sick. So after that, everybody's going to be sick again. So people take their hard earned money and they just gamble on the fact that the virus situation is over. I'm not talking about the, about my cycles. I just wonder how you can do that. And uh, you also, uh, this is something else you talked about. I want to cut, we have a lot of ground to cover here. Uh, this is another wild thing. Uh, you said with all the protests going on, on all Antifa and uh, Black Lives Matter, which is really just uh, what they really should call it is, um, is a communist Marxist lives matter. And don't you dare disagree with our uh, narrative, which is pretty scary, especially for, <laughs> for a lot of people around the world. 
Um, and so you forecast it. And this is when before we had any of this protest and riots and stuff. And you said something to the effect of, I don't have it perfect, but it's pretty close, that you worry less about a foreign war at this point than you do about uh, a political uh, or uh, a civil war, civil unrest. Could you explain? Explain, because it looks like you were right on the money there. Uh, could you explain what you're seeing now and how you came to that conclusion? Well, again, I think things don't move at random. So uh, as a market does move at random, it moves in certain times and at certain levels. Also, social uh, uh, developments move in, in cycles. Uh, the warming of the earth is a cycle. Uh, so uh, there's a 60 year cycle of social unrest and the, the last time was in the 60s. So it's very so it's very simple that after 60 years now we can make an analysis, say, you know, 60 years, uh, somebody was 20 years old and uh, and then in the 60s, uh, you know, and now he's 80, 90 or he's not there anymore. So I have to start all over again. So all kinds of explanations as why a stock goes up and down. We don't know that. I, I came to the conclusion, and I always worry because, like you said, you cannot say whatever is true anymore, that the warming cycle is almost over. Now, based on my cycles, it's almost over. If the virus is going to be a long-term situation, then, of course, uh, the warming cycle is over because the human input, if it already does something, is going to be less. So then people say, well, you know, you were saved by the fact that there's a virus and the whole economy is not functioning anymore. It doesn't matter what the reason is. The world takes care of itself. So if the, the, the warming of the earth has to stop at a certain point, something is going to happen. So the social unrest just started. And the other thing I mentioned about three, four years ago was talking about the Kondrashev cycle, who says that every so many years, let's say 60 years, a new place uh, becomes the the uh, the leader in economics, and then we said, you know, Europe was on the on the low, uh, United States is in the middle, and where it's happening now for the next 60 or 100 years is the East. It's going to be India, China, Singapore, Australia, and I told you, I think uh, last year, I am really surprised how fast Americans are now going according to the Kondrashev cycle. How busy they are to destruct the United States this fast. What do you mean by that, destroy the United States? You mean the enemies of the United States to destroy the United States? No, no, they destroy themselves. And is this part of the social unrest cycle um, that, that you you talked about? Is that this is part of what the destruction is? No, no, the two, the, the different cycles. One is an economic cycle. Yep. And one is a social unrest cycle. Maybe they go on hand in hand. I'm not sure. Uh, but if you have a country that doesn't allow you to say the truth anymore, how will you survive? Right. If you, it, it's it's really amazing what's going on there. Um, oh, you're saying you know, about people who are punished for questioning Black Lives Matter and questioning the narrative. Now the uh, commissioner of the uh, NFL. Oh, we were wrong. We're behind Black Lives Matter, which is really Antifa and communism. And everybody always apologizes. I don't think I mean it. I mean, not everybody's that stupid. They say speak their mind. And then the press says, oh, I apologize. I don't think they really apologize. So you can't open your mouth anymore. And in universities, you cannot be invited to say whatever you want. It leads to uh, it leads to violence. So that's the end of a society. And uh, back to how long do you think this social unrest cycle? Let's go back to that with all the you know, it's just it's the peg that's going on right now in terms of all the protests and the riots and all the burnings and busted windows and all that. How long do you think the social unrest cycle will last for? Will it turn into a civil war? Well, short term, it will last for 10, 15 years. Will it turn into a civil war? That that I don't know because there haven't been that many civil wars. But if you know, I lived 20 years in the United States, and uh, I'm happy to be here because to be in a society where you let people protest and then uh, steal from and loot all the all the businesses, and uh, and and not mention it, and where policemen are shot, I think four or five are shot and not mention it. Nobody mentions it. It's not a society that feel comfortable at the moment. So rough times uh, still ahead for America. Much more than you think. It's going to be worse and worse. Wow. But why do you say that it's going to be worse and worse? Because it only started. Look what happened in the 60s. Look how, how extreme it came. 
if you look what happened, you know, they killed uh, Martin Luther King, they killed uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy, they killed uh, his brother, the president. I mean, these things get out of hands because if you don't stop it, it gets out of hand. So if you don't stop people looting, it gets out of hand. And uh, well, let's move on to another uh, a big call that you made, uh, which uh, is almost like <laughs> you. Back, this is a couple of years ago when they were all with the the president's a Russian spy and Russia's manipulating it's Russia, Russia, and Russia like Marsha, 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 Russia, Russia, Russia. And uh, you came on and said, hey, no, 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 it, China, 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 China's going to be a problem. Could you yeah. talk to us about your call? And wow, we. We, we look like the trade deal's falling apart. We look like they, uh, the president and a lot of everybody in the world is saying that they spread this COVID virus. They didn't handle it well. They shut down flights uh, out of Wuhan, where the virus came from, inside China. But let them fly all over the world. I, a lot of people are upset with China and are, are pinning them with this virus a pandemic and the WHO covered up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you uh, clearly, uh, well ahead of time, it's, uh, identified China is gonna be the big problem spot. Where are we stand now? Well, that's gonna be the big problem. And a couple of years ago, it says the trick is gonna be to fight over the islands that are producing over there in the, in the Chinese sea. Um, how do I do that? There were cycles and the cycles based on economic expansion. And it was clear that that it goes together. And Russia was not the one that's going to do economic expansion. It's going to be India or or China. And I didn't think India would be in a situation that they're going to going to you know be very active in 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 the politics. So China was left. And you still think that China is? You think China is is wounded economically right now because of all this manufacturing shutdown and and some of the countries you know. Japan uh, removed a lot of their uh, manufacturing or is a process of doing that. There's calls to remove manufacturing in the United States, in Congress, in the Senate, to, to uh, bring it back home to the United States. Is China going to suffer? No, not really. But the other one point I want to make is that it's really gaining the momentum that happened in, in Persia. I mean, I, I say in a couple of years, Europe is going to be in a position that, that, that Iran says, if you don't do this and this and this, we're going to send some rockets over and destroy you. And now the Europeans are going to give in. Uh, it's the same thing that happened before the Second World War. These things are in cycles and people never learn. So I add now to the list what's going to happen in Iran. And I don't think the United States can do much about it because uh, like they forced now, the president cannot order an attack anymore, not even a small attack whenever he wants. And until he decides, uh, it's going to be too late. So the world is in for a major, major disaster. What do you, uh, what do you think the disaster will look like? Well, as you know, is that you, the, 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 the cycles uh, tell you when the war is going to be, like the cycles tell you when the market's going up. And the price targets tell you how high a stock is going to go and how high the market goes. That's why. Uh, I think our target was 33.90 on S&P, and that's where we went out. And if you do this with the war cycles, it's going to be a huge amount of casualties that's going to be there, and there's nowhere to hide. So it's uh, it's not the problem, the warming. The problem is it's five minutes past 12. We have nobody who understands anything. I talk to American uh, uh, diplomats, and all they say all the time is, this is the best in the United States is the best in the world. I says, you have never been outside the United States. How do you know what's the best? Like the medicine is the best in the world. Believe me, it's not. This is the best in the world, not. The democ democracy is the best in the world, it's not. So as long as you think you're the best in the world, there's not much to fix. And it, it just it's like an island United States. They have no idea compared to other countries what's going on. And they have no historic understanding to understand how to deal with, with the, the threats and the military threats threats that are going to be there soon. The biggest threat that's going to be here soon, is it is China, Russia, uh, um, Iran, uh, all the above? What are the military threats that are going to be there soon? Well, I think the way it looks is going to be China and Iran. And probably, you know, they, they in tandem. Like in the Second World War, we had Turkey and, and Germany. Now, what did Turkey have to do with Germany? They all kinds of, you know, things they had in common. And... Uh, so they're going to put something together.
the only one that keeps Iran alive now is is Russia and China, who still do business with them. And I guess, you know, something's going to happen. They're going to support them. Let's come around to the gold market. Uh, you know, I saw some headline the other day. Here we, here we have just massive money printing. I mean, you can't get around it. Congress is passing, you know, $2 trillion bills like they're handing out chiclets. Uh, the Federal Reserve has doubled their uh, their balance sheet, and it's going to even higher. And yet, gold is around seventeen hundred. Well, it's higher than it was when you said that it was going to go up. Yes, but you know, obviously, they're suppressing the price of gold. Um, uh, what is going on with gold and silver? Well, it stays with the same thing. The first target is two and a half thousand. The bull market is going to go up till till uh, two thousand twenty six. So probably we get much higher price targets. Uh, and these things go in waves, so uh, you know nothing goes up st straight up. We're long gold since I think 2011, November 2011, from 1480, and uh, we'll get to two and a half thousand. And the same thing, silver will also continue up. Uh, the first price target is 20 and a half. We have now on silver, uh, but people should watch our research if they really want to take advantage. We're playing gold like uh, it's the easiest market in the world. It goes up, it goes down exactly at the, at the price levels. It's a very professional market. Um, and mostly we play the gold market. And now, you know, we're looking to take a long position in the uh, VIX. You know, we always play the VIX very nicely. So we're going to take a look if we get some, some signs that uh, the cycle is going to top in about 10 days and then go along the VIX. Uh, but the gold market, you know, so 2026, there's a bull market. Uh, and what, what would you do, 20? So where would you be with the uh, stock market right now? With the stock market, you're saying uh, you, you wouldn't be buying here at the stock this levels. So you'd be waiting if you're going to play some bounce and try to play momentum and whatever you're doing trading, which I don't advise people to do unless they're, they know what they're no, doing. But what, where it, was do you, very, it was very nice. And we're now looking to get out. Uh, as you know, probably we have intraday service. So intraday, once or twice a day, we tell exactly where the short-term sell levels are. We're very close. And we do the same as, uh, as in February uh, before the market crashed. We're going to zero stocks. And we'll see what happens uh, late, late June. So you are out now. You have told your subscribers, get out, get out, get out. You play the bounce, get out. That's that just going the last couple of days. That's happening. Ah, so you're 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 exiting the market once again. You would, you, would it be safe to say you you uh, told your uh, subscribers to play the bounce, and now the bounce is over. Right, the cycle is stopping in ten seven days. As you know, I don't like to play till the last moment. It has been very nice, uh, but there's no sell signal yet. So so what 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 my my my, my subscribers do is they know when a cycle top is. If it comes early, you know where the sell signal is. So you can stay in until the cycle tops, until we get a sell signal, which is now, I think it's like 3,050 on the S&P somewhere there. So it's not not too far away. All right. Uh, anything you'd like to add? Uh, any, um, uh, you, you just, do, is there any bright spot you can end on? Is there any any good good thing on the horizon for America or the, and or the world? Well, guys, we just have to talk about interest rates a little bit because uh, the bonds, they had a big sell off. Now they have the expected bounce, but longer term, the yields are not now going up. That's interesting, right? Wow. So yields are going up. Yeah. Um, so you think interest rates have bottomed out at this point? So yields are going to go up for you. I know the 10 years was at, you know, I don't know, it got down to point three ridiculous levels. And now it's, it's gone up from there up pretty significantly, doubled or more than doubled. Uh, but anyway, uh, so you think the interest rates are on the upswing right now? Well, we have a couple of bounce of lower rates, uh, sorry, a couple of weeks of lower rates, and but longer term, it's making a major reversal that will surprise everybody. And I think a lot of money is going to be lost once uh, the bonds are really coming down because people have no idea why they would come down. I also don't know why they would come down. So obviously something is going on. Uh, I just remind you, but I don't have any clues for that, that in Europe, interest rates went through the roof when Greece and, and Italy and Portugal were defaulting almost on their loans. Um, so I don't know what the reason is. I just see that, you know, uh, now longer term, we have seen the low and, uh, and, and interest rates are going to rise. And what about the U.S. dollar? 
Well, the US dollar continues on a sell signal uh, for the moment. Um, I just happen to look at it now as long as on a dollar index, there's no close above 97, the sell signal continues. Uh, it's still going to be some weakness, but it will pick up later uh, in, in a couple of weeks or in a month, it will pick up and start going back to the high. So you don't think the dollar, a lot of people are thinking, oh, the dollar with all the money printing is going to, going to you know, crater and going to, going to die off. You're not saying that right now. You're, you're not saying a massive dollar weakness going into the end of, end of the year or anything like that. Well, as you know, it's based on cycles. People make different interpretations. Uh, so if the cycle is up, they say, oh, it's going to be OK. And if, if the cycle is down, it says, oh, it's going to be a catastrophe. So it depends when they come out with all these ideas, what the cycles say. It's not the reality. You know, if the, if, if the market thinks the Fed is going to do something on interest rates, it already influences the market without them doing it. And I was to try to explain that that the, the interpretation is more important. That's why uh, 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 Professor Schiller wrote a book about narratives. So finally, he came to the conclusion that narratives are more important than facts in influencing markets. The only thing is missing is, and that we have had for 30 years is, that you have to predict what the narrative is going to be. Is it going to be positive or negative? Otherwise, it doesn't help you much to know that narratives influence markets. So whatever the Fed does has nothing to, to do so much with reality, only interpretation what people make out of it. Uh, so whenever they decide to do something, it depends on what the cycle is doing. Is it up or down to know what the influence is going to be? Oops. And what do you think the narrative for the dollar will be? Some people are calling for it to crash, crater, be cut in half, hyperinflation. Other people are expecting it to go higher, higher, higher as interest rates go. Where's your call on the U.S. dollar? What's the narrative on the dollar? Well, I never know what the narrative is. I, is. I only say is why would the dollar change direction? Because the, the cycle is changing the direction and the narrative is then changing from negative to positive. So, uh, but but I'm looking also at the euro. Uh, it's still holding on, but uh, you know, longer term the cycle is turning down again, and the euro is the anti-dollar. So longer term the dollar must go up again. So you th you don't see the dollar cratering in any of your cycles anytime soon, at least not this year. Not no, not for the moment. No, dollar's going to going to hang right where it needs to be. And I I don't I don't think that what the what the European uh, bank does is worse than what the uh, or what the, what the American the Fed does is worse than what European uh, mark, uh, bank does. So then there's no reason to be worried about the dollar because of what the Fed decides to print money. So even with all the money printing, that's not going to crash the dollar, at least, at least in the foreseeable future. No, no, no. Wow. That's an amazing call. Another amazing call. And when we have you back on, we'll look back at what your calls were. And you've made some good ones. I mean, nobody's 100%, but you're pretty good. <laughs> so the important thing to now is to watch what happens between the 26 and 26. In my system, things have to happen at a certain moment and a certain level, which means is if it's not happening by then, but I think it's happening, the situation could be differently. So as you know, we always have a, a big discount for people who write in. Okay. Uh, come to to uh, to yes, I was talk, and they get one. I'm not sure, or two months for free. So since it's such an important top, uh, maybe we idea to take the free research. If you don't like it, that's fine. If you like it, you can always sign up. But this is an important turning point, and then you know exactly what we're thinking. Um, uh, and I'm gonna just throw this out because we didn't even talk about this, but I'll just say if you don't have an answer, you don't have an answer. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. You can just say you don't know, okay? But do you think with all this turmoil and all what's going on with the markets, the economy, the uh, COVID crisis, the you know the big giant uh, smash down, and uh, you know there's 4.5 jobs for every um, 4.5 people uh, that uh, are there to fill every single job that's opening up right now, massive unemployment. Is Donald Trump going to be reelected or is he going to be booted out of office in your, in your cycle? Well, for the, last, for the last 120, 130 years, once the cycle on interest rate turns up, the one that is the party that is in, is in, in the White House continues to be reelected. Isn't that interesting? Don't ask me why. And the other thing is, if you would write down what Trump did, 
without discussing anything about how he does it and what his personality is, then he probably will be reelected because he got some interesting things done. Uh, but if you think I don't like him, uh, and that that starts to be a main thing pushed by media, then he won't be reelected. Again, it has to do with the cycle. Um, I find it interesting how people don't look at the pocketbooks, they don't look at results. They says I don't like the guy. I don't happen. I don't care what happens to if an am unemployed, the market goes down, uh, NAFTA doesn't work out, uh, Mexico is not going to work out. I don't like him, so I'm not going to vote for him. It's so amateuristic. I, I it's, here in Europe we don't believe that. Not that Europeans like Trump, but if you talk to some people who have an understanding, says we don't understand. Don't know people know what's going on. So the the, crack, the question is, the cycle looks like they're going to look at what he did and not what he says. Uh, so I guess he's going to be uh, the next president based just on that cycle. If the cycle will be turning down, that means is they're more interested in how he behaves than what he does. And isn't that interesting that when rates begin to go up, the party in power stays in power. That is throughout history in your cycle work. And yeah. you're definitely seeing interest rates ding, 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 going up. Yeah, well, it doesn't go. Maybe it doesn't know how fast it goes. I don't know yeah. where we're in November. But, but the cycle, the trend is up, yeah. not down. Yeah. yeah, the longer term trend, now we're talking about a couple of years or so. Very. Another surprise, right? Yeah, and that's, <laughs> he surprised me. Very interesting. That was very, very interesting. Very. It doesn't matter who. No, don't matter who. Whether it's Democrat or Republican in the White House, you're in the. Ah, okay. All right. Well, listen. Uh, I'll put up your uh, Charles uh, Nenner Research Center or CharlesNenner.com. I believe it uh, is your website. Uh, I'll put the free little code. Is there a promo code? A Hunter or USA Watchdog or anything to put in there? Just write in how you. How do you get get the the uh, the, the deal? That's a good question. Uh, first, you get the free, the free. Th okay. I, that's a good question. I think you have a free I have thing on there. Assistance, but the right on the phone now. Uh, oh. You have one second. Oh no 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 that's a that's okay. Well 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 yeah well no 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 I don't want to do it all live on camera. Uh, there's a free. I know there's a free a uh, trial on your website. You know it's what? Always I'll on. Check it out and then you put it on your website. We'll talk later. Yeah, we'll talk later and uh, I'll I'll put the code in. You'll call me later or you have your assistant call me and we'll have a little code there for people to put in and we'll uh, we'll work it that way. Okay, it'll be in the after the interview section for you folks uh, at YouTube. Go to USA Watchdog. There's a click back. Go to the after the interview section and all that stuff will be in there. The uh, Charles Netter Research Center. Uh, geopolitical and economic cycle expert Charles Nenner, world renowned. Uh, also, um, uh, you know, his website is uh, uh, charlesnenner.com. So, Charles Nenner, uh, thanks for coming on. That was a fabulous interview. Thanks for coming on. And hey, thanks for being right. Okay. Charles Nenner, uh, again, thanks for coming on usawatchdog.com.